Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2 for the Rapture Gaming League. We are here with one game, best of one, Mineski versus Orange. And we're going to see which one of these two teams comes out ahead of this best of one. And it's actually a pretty important uh, game, mostly for Mineski, but actually also for Orange. The thing is, there is seven teams Ten in the group, and the top six make it through to the playoffs, so there's only one going to be dropped off. Five and remaining. the top two actually get themselves into the semi-finals straight away, while the rest still has to go to the quarterfinals. Now, the group stage at the moment look the way, like the top four, the first one is Myth, who is sitting on seven wins. The other three behind them are all sitting on six wins, and one of those is Orange. So if Orange wins this one, they are sitting on second place, and they will have a chance to get seated directly into the semi-finals. Now, for Mineski, they are actually sitting on four wins in total, which is really not all that much, and their chances to get into the top two is, is kind of limited, but they might still be having a chance to get dropped out and be last one on the group, and they don't want that, so they kind of need this win also, though uh, for now they're sitting comfortably above Awake and Impervious. Well, I say comfortably, but they're only like our one loss or one win away. So, Five seconds that's the reason why these teams want to win these games. It's very simple. You want to have the points. Points are important. Let's take a look at what we have here. Of course, just now I explained for people that were... Uh, that were actually, for the VOD, just real quick. Um, Winter is being replaced by uh, Darkwish here as Winter is on his way to Korea. We've got ourselves Mineski on the Dire side. And they have banned out the Lich and the L... Or the uh, the OD, the Elder Titan and the uh, Nature's Prophet banned out by Orange on the Radiant side. Timber saw picked up first by Mineski, together with that Weaver, and a Visage for Orange. Now, of course, the support that's still in the pool is a Crystal Maiden, and we have seen her being rewarded with uh, first pickups lately, which is... Uh, yeah, I personally, I, I, really, I really like it, but it might be slightly overdone. But still in the pool, and it looks like we're going to see her getting uh, ignored here, unless Orange was to secure their two supports straight away, in which case... Uh, they kind of give away quite a lot about what they, how their trial lane is going to look or how their dual lane are going to look and maybe don't leave any space to counter a certain hero that's still to be picked up by Mineski. So we're going to see it. Especially, I mean, uh, Crystal Maiden is all nice and stuff, and that's not great up against the Weaver, nor up against the Timber Saw because they can Timber Chain and Time Lapse while in there. So they kind of need a solid Disable still, Orange, that is. So perhaps we're going to see something else picked up first. As for Mineski, I mean, with the Weaver and a Timber Saw, they kind of give away quite a lot in terms of what they are going to do here with their lineup. I mean, they have got themselves two potential solo lanes, two cores, and there's only place for one more core and possibly a jungle hero if they want to. And Well, they, they, just, they just give away a lot. We have seen both Timbersaw and Weaver Ten in the mid lane before, though. Remaining. Timbersaw may be a bit more um, logical. We've seen Weaver on the off lane Five and the safe lane before remaining. as well. And we'll see which supports they are going to be picking up together with that. But Orange, they will burn out some supports, including the Crystal Maiden, as said, is not the right support for them at the moment with the Visage already picked up. So they ban it out. They actually picked up the Darkseer. And now we haven't seen Darkseer in a while because he kind of needs quite a lot to be of effect. And you need to actually have those kind of team fights. Because the most important thing about a Darkseer is, of course, the vacuum. And vacuum into anything you can think of, including his own spells, obviously, but the vacuum. To have that put to use, though, that you need to be finding team Zero fights. Time. You need to be finding five on five fights. And lately, we've seen uh, we've seen a lot of um, of ganks going around. And perhaps with Mineski's lineup with the Weaver and a Timber Saw, it's not really your typical team fight cores either. So we'll see if uh, that Darkseer can um, can help his team out there. As Mineski is going to have the chance to ban out some heroes next. They're actually taking into their bonus time already. Uh, same thing that Orange just did. They have actually only got 33 seconds left in their bonus time. Used most of it already. Hopefully for them they can also put this bonus time for Mineski to use. But apparently Mineski wasn't really able to put the bonus time of Orange all to all that much use because they still need a lot of bonus time themselves. Now, one thing that Mineski could of course ban out is diff different supports that work well together with the Visage. Radiant Another chance is to just ban out heroes that they don't want to be up against. A Razor ban typically indicates that you're going to pick up, like, OD is very strong up against a Razor, but OD is already removed from the pool, so that's not why they ban out the Razor. A chance could be that that Weaver is the only core Ten that they're seconds, expecting to have, in which case, against a one core lineup, a Razor is really strong. Five seconds, so maybe. perhaps that's something that Orange can keep in, uh, in mind, that they can actually uh, work with. Reserve if they are expecting that Weaver to be the only core, then they can, for example, draft a very... 
aggressive trialing and try to shut them down that way. If and if your only core is shut down, you're gonna have a tough time. Or they can find some other openings where they can uh, what they can work with. They have to ban out a hero first though, and uh, possibly another support can be uh, picked up. It is a support. It isn't a bad. We've seen a bad lately a couple of times on dual lanes, especially with weavers. Uh, just with that heal, just securing the. Securing the lane for them. Timber saw works well together with Abaddon as well, by the way. It's a very strong combination as well. Just put the shield up. Timber saw jumps himself into the enemy lineup, and the shield will keep him safe. And even if it doesn't, it lands a big AoE, AoE blow to everybody of Orange. Or in this case, Orange, then at least. Earthshaker picked up by Maneski. I love that hero. Brilliant control hero. Brilliant up against Darkseer as well. I mean, of course, you can vacuum things over. Over fishers and stuff, so you know it's not that important for like yeah. Well, it is important also for Earthshaker to be careful that uh, you know where he lays those fish and not to block his uh, his own team off. But for example, Darkseer's way of being safe on a on a on a suicide line is his surge, and you know you can surge all you want, but if your path is blocked by a fisher, well, good luck with that. You can't move through it. So uh, that's going to be an interesting thing to see for Mineski how they're going to be uh, doing with that one, how they're going to be working that Earthshaker in, and if it's indeed going to be a trial lane there. Because it could also seconds, still, of course, remaining. be two dual lanes, which I wouldn't be surprised about, though, with an Earthshaker. Five yeah, we'll see, remaining. we'll see. They, have, uh, they are at least uh, thinking about their next pickup. Another support picked up by Orange. They have still not giving away too much of their lineup. They picked up a Rubik. Strong hero and great spells to steal. There are so many good spells to steal for this Rubik right now. Fisher. One of the most, uh, you know, impactful spells that you can steal, Shikushi. Rubik, so important with uh, positioning, which is often why you see him getting uh, getting four staves, blink daggers and all that jazz. And, you know, getting a Shikushi gets even more mobility out of that Rubik. Timber saw the, t the Chakram that you can steal is actually a pretty big deal as well. So, yeah, Rubik is going to have a fun time in terms of stealing spell. And that's already with only three heroes picked up. I mean, Mineski still needs two more, so Ruby can only get uh, get better at Ten this point. But still, Orange, they, uh, they have two cores left to pick up, and they've not given anything Five away about what they want to do with those cores. Because Rubik and Visage... V Rubik is considered a bit of a support that can keep his carry safe, so Radiant it's not even necessarily that it's going to be an aggressive try lane. Rubik can keep it safe, it can still be two dual lanes. It can You can do anything. I mean, it can be two dual lanes with Darkseer on the mid lane. There is such an open draft for Orange at the moment, and even though you know I, I really like that. It's it's hard to uh, to well to come up with the right thing to do for Orange with uh, as a caster like that is. Asia Deparation. Now that's a hero that I haven't seen in a while, at least not in uh, competitive plays, or remaining. at least not while I was casting. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> Five seconds remaining. Interesting hero. Dyer Works well together with Earthshaker though, with uh, Cold Feet. Fisher goes down, cold feet are on, and you can't get away, and the cold feet will proc. Now that's a very strong combination. And actually makes me think that perhaps they want to make it a bit of a... Ten seconds well, perhaps they're expecting an aggressive trailing coming out from Orange. They pick up a Spectre that Orange does, and Radiant Spectre is not really the best hero to be on the, having it on an aggressive trailing. So I'm expecting him to be just in a safe lane, Darkseer in the off lane, trial lane with the uh, Rubik and the Visage. Rubik and Visage also are two heroes that can Dyer roam around team. pretty successfully, depending on who is, of course, mid, if they can gank him there, the target. If it's actually a gankable hero. We'll see about that. We have both uh, sides banning out two strong cores, though. Uh, strong mid laners. Is it the Puck and the Queen of Pain? The combination that we often see up against each other, but both removed because of their escape mechanisms and because they are just really hard to gank. And it looks like both teams want to make their supports have an impact remaining. on that mid lane, in which case uh, they don't want to face heroes that can escape. Five so let's see what these remaining. two teams are going to pick up for that mid lane. Slightly in favor of Orange because they have the second pick, so they can counter whatever Orange Radiant picks up. And Orange actually picks up the Life Stealer still. Now that's an interesting one because I wasn't expecting that one anymore considering that with the Razor Ban you were thinking of one core, I was thinking of one core. But they pick up the Life Stealer. There are a couple of ways to uh, go for Infest Bomb by the way with the uh, Timber Saw and the Weaver. I'm expecting now the, the Timber Saw to be still on the, um, on the mid lane and that means that Orange will have to, uh, well, seconds. let's see if Orange thinks the same thing as I do, actually, because that's the question first. What are they going to put mid? Five Which heroes remaining. work well up against that Timber Saw mid? There's not that many, actually, that can do well versus him. Especially not a lot of melee heroes, so they have to go for a range. They go for a Shadow Fiend, and 
I have to say, I am not entirely convinced. Shadow Fiend, the, the reason why we haven't seen him in a while... Uh, well, I haven't seen him in a while. We've seen him, we've seen him lately. But the reason why we haven't seen him um, more often than we have is because normally the one thing that you do when you have a Shadow Fiend up against you, you gank him. You make sure that he does not get those souls up. You gank him repeatedly, and if the Shadow Fiend gets behind, even if you only shut him down in the first five minutes, it's very tough for him to get back up on his so-called horse and actually, you know, get them get those souls flowing and get that carry potential flowing. And Mineski, their lineup, the, with an Earthshaker and an Ancient Operation, they definitely have some ganking potential. So if they are able to shut down that Shadow Fiend, then that's going to be a tough thing for Orange to do. But perhaps that's exactly what Orange wants, because they also want to maybe go for some ganks. Maybe try to make something happen mid lane. A Timber Saw is a very tough hero to gank in that mid lane. He has a Timber Chain normally and should be able to Timber Chain at least to this uh, line of trees and get himself away. And look what greedy, greedy items he has. I mean, he got pulled one Tango. And other than that, it's just, you know, keeping that gold going. Wants to get that bottle real fast. Only picked up two branches. Well, we'll see if that pays off. Let's take a look at who is playing a what. As uh, we do have everybody of Mineski complete. Uh, their whole squad is on the dire side. No stand-ins, no nothing. We've got Josh. He's playing the Ancient Apparition. He will be on the top lane together with Jesse Vash. He'll be uh, playing the Carry Life Sealer. On the bottom lane, we're going to have a dual lane. It is a Weaver played by Joven. And Jay is actually playing the Earthshaker. This is Jay with... Uh, at... Ets. We call it Ets. With a weird smiley face. Let's put it that way. Cool. So that's everybody of Maneski. They are, of course, with five. Surprise! <laughs> no, Orange is on the on the Radiant side. We are gonna see uh, a dual lane so far here on this bottom lane. Never mind. It's it's gonna be a tri lane. We already have Spectre around there as well. It's just gonna block. Ling will play the Rubik. It will be the stand-in Darkwish, the Singaporean player, uh, playing the Visage. Sharky will be on the Spectre as uh, we see Joven trying to... Uh, Stop the uh, the block, which was successful. But yeah, Sharky playing the Spectre here. In the mid lane, we have got uh, Yamate, or NWP, which is actually his initials for his real name. Already getting harassed a bit, and looks like he'll actually get his... Uh, the, huh, get the Cold Feet proc. Like, if you if you delay the farm of Yamate, already said, that's, that's a big deal. But he'll be on the Shadow Fiend. We'll see how he does here up against Jules. On the top lane, it will be 60... He was called 60% earlier, but this is actually TFG, so too fucking good. Is playing that Darkseer here on this top lane, and it uh, looks to be just uh, wanting to pull the wave. Maybe Josh can uh, can counter that though, as the pause comes out. Pfft, what a timing. Well, the range creep will come actually, but I doubt that the rest will actually join that range creep. And Ancient Operation, since he saw this, he is going to be seeing that, um, he is going to be getting experience from the, this neutral camp as well, if they actually uh, go down. Apparently Spectre has an issue, um, which is uh, pretty troublesome since Weaver is already uh, standing right in front of him and hitting him. But uh, we'll see. We have a goal again, for at least for Mineski, but yeah, also for Orange. Let's go again. Uh, okay. Waiting for Orange to uh, to make something happen there. In the meantime, Yamate is still sitting on level one. At least, lucky for him, the Age of Separation is not gonna be uh, hanging around for uh, for a while because he came top. But it is still quite annoying this um, this matchup for him. So far though, I mean, now four last hits. Once he gets to about seven souls, seven souls is, is, the, is the, the kind of the um, marking point where you're gonna be doing okay. From that point onward. So, looks like he'll, he'll be making that there. As uh, Sharky is also getting some uh, some nice farm here. Free farm here. As Urshake, of course, we've seen him do this before. We've seen Urshakers do this before. Just lay down fissures and get the creep wave denied by the ancients. And with that, even try to farm up some of the ancient creeps. And this is actually a big deal for Sharky, because he'll miss he'll miss a lot of creep waves. And he actually, I would suggest him to go into the jungle to take this farm because he is not getting a creep wave for a while. In the meantime, looks like Jesse Vash is uh, having some issues with that iron shell. I mean, those iron shells were constantly pushed the lane out. 
Nice. Nicely done. TFG making sure that he uh, is gonna get some farm. I mean, it will be shared, fair enough, but at least he'll make sure that the creep wave is closer to him and he'll be getting experience, something that he didn't get while the creep wave was on the other side, so pretty big deal. Weaver. He's got Chikushi on cooldown for the moment. Looks to be okay, though. He's just getting chased out. There is a sentry still up on Rubik, but only one. It's a tango. We'll be, we'll be just fine. As long as they can harass him out of the lane, he'll be fine. Sharky, in the meantime, having some easier time now that the creep wave actually gets pulled through. And now that Earthshaker is rotated. He's actually rotated top. Went up to help out his team. Still level 1. Not blocking the camp anymore. Or not not pulling the creeps anymore to the to the ancients. Not even a ward place there, which I was expecting Orange to do after they realized what Earthshaker was doing. But Earthshaker rotating means Sharky is going to have free farm. Now that's something that... You know, it's pretty scary. It's free farming Spectre. So you, you do that because you know that you're going to be able to do something before he does. So that means that Jesse Vash should be getting more out of the lane than Spectre does. And that's at the moment. It's just not the case. Because Jesse Vash is sitting on 10 for 3 while uh, Spectre is sitting on 14 to 5. Perhaps it means that they expect to have the Timber Saw more than... Or, or get him up to par fast enough to start uh, roaming around and killing off people and then just get a, enough ahead before that Spectre starts to really ramp up. So far though, Jules is uh, seemingly having a tough time. Yamate's Shadow Fiend, I mean, it is one of his signature heroes for a reason. Well, that's your first blood right there! Speak of the devil. Shadow Fiend, signature hero. Wait a second, Weaver might be in some trouble here as well. Goes down here for a soul assumption. Urshaker coming in as well. He will be able to live though. DP in from Asia Depuration forces everybody back. Two kills go in the way of Orange and quick succession of each other and... That's not looking good. I mean, at least... At least Neski made sure that Sharky didn't get the kill, which is, you know, blessing in disguise. But a Shadow Fiend that has already got first blood, that, I mean, he got shut down a little bit early on. If... If... Asia Depuration was at least hanging around longer. It would have been so much better because the bee is so much more behind. But he's 20 to 10. He is highest in terms of last hits and the nice. And Jules is just 18 for 4. We do have Asia Depuration coming back, by the way. But he's just, uh, I believe he's just moving past. Perhaps going for a cold feed or something. But at the moment, they just cannot kill him. We do have Lifestealer getting back up to par in terms of last hits, though. He's sitting on 22 to 5 right now. Catching up with the Spectre. It's even even with the Spectre at the moment. Sharky with phase boots. Life Sealer with phase boots. Very even. But uh, yeah, this middle lane, this difference here is the difference in the game. It is such a scary, scary sight. The Shadow Fiend that gets out of hand, gets out of control. I think we've all seen it before in pubs. And we've all seen it before in competitive games as well. It's just normally you expect more ganks to come out of the Shadow Fiend to shut them down more. But Mineski, they, we, we have to assume that they have a plan. We have to assume that they take this into consideration and they are okay with him getting uh, getting something out of this. As we have got Earthshaker laying down a Fisher, stopping Sharky from chasing, but it's only level 1 Fisher. In comes the Soul Ascension. That's going to be another kill. In the meantime, Weaver tries to go for Ling. We'll be able to pick him up. At least they get something in return for that, but is it enough? Is it enough? They, can, they have to do something against the Spectre. Luckily for them, Spectre is only level 4. I mean, he has to share experience on a trial lane. But once he starts getting those levels up, once those supports are okay with leaving the lane, it is going to be so scary for Mineski. And talking about supports leaving the bottom lane, we already have Ling coming mid. Um, wow, that's a weird set for a Rubik. He's only got one eye. Anyways, he looks to take a kill up on the team cell, perhaps. It is nighttime after all. Maybe he just wants to have that uh, telekinesis there from the low ground if he's lucky enough. We'll find out though. Now, by the way, there there might be oh, there's your telekinesis. Wait a second, Jules, you're so dead. I think Timber's chain away. He doesn't have a Timber chain. Never mind. But they don't chase him either. Radiance oh, I think they could have chased him. I think they could have killed him with no Timber chain. That that is just. Even at level 6, like at least one level in the timber chain to give you some sort of escape mechanism at Jules. No, he just chooses to walk. Apparently he is so afraid of trees that he can't even dream to latch onto them. And that's of course some lore pun, but oh well. Uh, one thing of course, I mean you have probably noticed that the, you see, for example, the raises. You see the Shadow Fiend raising his arms before anything actually happens. That's, uh, that's uh, the delay I have to the Singaporean servers 
Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do with that. Nice uh, rotation coming off from TFG, realizing that something was off. The smoke on uh, Earthshaker and Age of Deparation being revealed, and Darkseer just rotating into the enemy jungle to make sure he keeps himself safe. I mean, he doesn't even have to worry too much about the pushing coming off from Maneski because they don't really have that much of a pushing lineup. They've got a counter pushing lineup, that's for sure, but not really that much push themselves. No, he just teleports himself back towards the top lane as uh, Timbersaw once again tries to get himself away from Yamate. Yamate sitting at level 8, 45 to 19. Timbersaw, 28 to 4. There is such a big difference between those two heroes right now. And Normally I'd actually say Jules probably should be trying to rotate right now to try and find kills elsewhere because he's not getting anything out of this middle lane. I mean, he's getting some experience, that's fair enough, but Orange is getting way more out of this middle lane than, than Mineski is, so... I would expect Jules to, to rotate, but what's he gonna rotate to? Wait a second, Weaver, dead again. I mean, he's not gonna rotate bottom, obviously, because this tri lane here is just deadly, as deadly can be. They cannot make anything happen because good luck killing off Spectre. He has a haunt now. There will be telekinesis from Rubik, who is almost level 6. There's almost familiars here. So you can't really take on this, middle, uh, this bottom lane unless you have way more to help, way more heroes to help, perhaps. Earthshaker, hello, welcome to the bottom lane. They need more though, they need Earthshaker, Timbersaw, and then one other. You can't go in without being, um, at least outnumbering your opponent, or at least be even. Weaver comes in as well, they are now three versus three. If it's enough that Timbersaw being there, that might, I mean, level four on the Whirling Death might be enough. They need a good initiation though, they need the best fisher of Jay's life, but looks like they're not even gonna try. Timbersaw rotating back mid, that means he just missed out on a lot of time that he could farm or he could get experience at least. And he didn't get anything down bottom. Wasted time for him. In the meantime on the top lane though, Jesse Vash still farming away, still doing okay, going for an omelet. Second highest on net worth, but the difference between him and the Shadow Fiend is, yeah, is there. 800 gold difference for a safe laner on the, like, free farm safe lane on the top lane. I mean, it, maybe not entirely free farm with those, uh, wait a second, they find the Earthshaker, hello! Thought you were safe there? No, you're not. Fisher still goes down, but he blocks himself and as well, still is able to st stun Sharky. But Sharky, he doesn't care about Fisher, so he can walk over them. Um, not anymore, with, but with the, uh, with the Spectral Dagger, he should be able to walk over most Fishers. But that's Earthshaker down again. At least, uh, they didn't give up a Spectre for it, or sorry, a Visage for it, that was close by. But yeah, that's how we're doing work there. Now yeah, work, ward. If Timbersaw was there, perhaps, perhaps they could have, they could have gotten something more out of it. But the pressure is on the life stealer in this game for Mineski. Orange is very comfortable. They're doing really well. They have got all lanes going their way. Maybe the bottom top lane not going their way, but Darkseer is still getting enough. Fisher comes out. Sharky actually might be in some trouble here. He has got the hunt. He still has a bug on him. The beetle. It does go down. And actually, he is gonna be okay. Nobody chased him anymore. Perhaps the Will Fisher comes out if he just... I, the range got increased, but this is too long of a range. Yeah, he won't be able to do it anymore. Familiars, finding Asia separation. This is actually pretty scary. Nah, he couldn't. Never mind. That would have been that would have been too much. Shadow Feet now with a haste rune. Still goes mid. But yeah, as I said, Orange is, is in a happy place right now. They are in no hurry to make anything else happen on the map. As uh, we have got Link trying to find Asia Deparation. And TP's out. Wrong niche that he was in. Oh well. Mineski though, they, they have the pressure. Their late game is not as strong as the late game of Orange. Shadow Fiend, a Spectre, will outcarry a Weaver and a Life Stealer. Spectre is considered to be one of the strongest carries in the game if she is 6 slotted. And so, uh, pretty scary. Now, on the other hand, of course, to get a Spectre 6 slotted, I mean, Spectre does need more to be as big of a carry as Life Stealer is early on in the game. Like her peak comes in late game. Life Stealer comes online a bit earlier. For example, when he has his armlet, he could actually try to get it with the timber saw to roam around and get kills. Infest in the timber saw, make the timber saw be aggressive and do things. But timber saw, he can't be aggressive. His timber chain doesn't work apparently, and he will be trying to flee from the scene. Won't be able to do so. Rage has come out. Another kill going the way of Yamate. In comes the Requiem of Souls. That's a bit of a trigger. Happy Requiem of Souls. He really wanted to have that Earthshaker. Level 4 Earthshaker without boost. Oh, come on. That's no challenge. That is no challenge. Well, in comes the hunt. It is Jesse Vash that at least tries to make something happen for his team, but forced away. In the meantime, Sharky actually is on the back end, able to pick off the Asian apparition. 
Still Sharky alive, maybe not for long, but it looks like, yeah, he'll be fine. He can TP out in five seconds as well. Life Sealer went down with that as well. Three heroes dead here in the mid lane. At least Joven was able to stay alive through all that, but killing off the, the, the savior for Mineski. Orange able to kill off that Life Sealer. That is just a big deal. A very big deal. Orange, super far ahead. And we see the gold graph. It tells the story. Of course, they were getting ahead gradually, fair enough. And then... This is the period where Orange tried to make things happen. This is the period where they rotated. So they didn't get anything for a little while. But then when they did, this is making your rotation worth it. That's, that's what that looks like. 7,500 gold in their favor. Experience graph, same story. While well, they're rotating, not anything. And then boom, up. Skyrocketing experience graph. Not as big as the uh, gold graph though, but still pretty scary. It's 9 for 1 in the kill score. Mineski only able to pick up one hero thus far. And this Spectre getting bigger and bigger by the minute, sitting on treads, sorry, not treads, face boots and drums and 1100 gold. Taking a look at the Life Stealer, who is of course also farming. Oh, hello, Life Stealer, sitting in Joven. Now, Joven doesn't even have treads yet. As Darkseer goes down to the Earth Shaker, at least that's something that Mineski was able to get in the top lane. I'm gonna follow this Weaver though, because if this Life Stealer sits inside of him for too long, that's completely wasted time. Oh, Yamate. What are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Fisher coming out from Ling now. Open wounds. Jesse Bash is like surprise, and and you know normally say surprise mother whatever, and this time he could just not do it. He's like surprise and then trails off. It's like okay, you know what? I shouldn't be here. But that's that's. I mean, I mentioned this during the draft. Fisher is one of the more important spells to steal. It's such a strong spell. He now steals the rage, which is nice as well to get away, especially from the life stealer himself. Open Wounds comes out, Sentry Ward upon Sentry Ward, in comes a Fisher, Yamate might be in some trouble, the Echo Slam comes out, Requiem of Souls still go out before he dies, it is the Shadow Fiend that drops, but at least revenge is being had, Ling picks up the Earthshaker, it is the Life Stealer and the Ancient Deparation that drop as well, on the top lane, <coughs> uh, that oh, top lane the Ancient Deparation dies to the Dark Seer, but Life Stealer went down right here, so kills all over the place for Orange again, they do lose their most important hero on the map right now, though Yamate, Paid for that with his life. Shadow Blade, not Fire's successful. Sentry Ward, able to counter that. However, they do make sure that the Sentry Ward of Mineski gets cleaned out again because their Sentry kept standing while Orange uh, or Mineski's one was uh, able to get picked up. In the meantime, Darkseer, I mean, I, g I guess we haven't seen too much of him just yet. But <clears throat> yeah, he is doing fine. He's got a mechanism for his team. And, I mean, normally you'd see, like, Darkseer, Mechanism, okay, group up, go, but, you know, he's fine on the top lane. He did get ganked earlier, but three heroes were used to take him down, and perhaps he can get himself uh, another kill here, as uh, Yamate is actually coming top as well, looking for Jesse Vash. Not only Yamate, but also Ling around here with, hello, hello, Echo Slam Rubik. Well, that's interesting. We're going to see if he can make something happen with that one. You need, do need quite a few creeps around, and so far there's no creep wave around. Asian Deparation Oath comes out, hits up on the Shadow Fiend actually, but and in comes the Fisher. Telekinesis comes out, in comes the Aqua Slam, doesn't do as much, but the Fisher does do a lot. Earthshaker drops, can they get more armlet and rage on for Life Stealer to get himself out of there? Couldn't get more with that uh, nice Echo Slam, or not so nice Echo Slam, but couldn't get more with that, but at least they force him back and perhaps they get the last out of Tower of Mineski with that as well, which is of course their goal. It is going to be Josh getting stunned up by Familiar, Soul Assumption comes in, and that should be a kill going the way of the Visage. Indeed, it is another kill going the way of Orange, 15 to 3. Well, Orange has not lost a single outer tower just yet, while well, we do have Mineski having no tier 1 tower left standing. All their tier 2 still standing though, but Orange, I guess, that's gonna be their next goal. I mean, it's a quite clear way of doing things. Just If you are ahead in, the, in, um, <coughs> in a game, you go for the outer towers, you go for the Roche, and you go for the high ground. That's that's the, the normal way to do things, and, you know, towers still to be had for Orange, though, why not? I did say, though, earlier on in this game that Mineski does have a quite decent counter-push lineup, and that's, of course, the result of that Fisher Asia Deparation doing nice uh, with counter-pushing as well as the Timber Saw with the Chakram. If it's enough, that's the question. I mean, Orange does not really have a big initiator just yet if the Shark if Sharky is not there. I mean, they can run in the Dark Seer, but he's not that tanky yet, and he doesn't have, for example, Blink Dagger or something like that. Oh, Earthshaker, run for his... Run, a hunt actually goes in for him as well. Oh, this Earthshaker, J. No. Onage being called as the rays goes through. Earthshaker dropped. 
Ooh, Wrecking of Souls forces out the time lapse from the Weaver. In comes AA ult, actually. Doesn't hit up on anybody. Perhaps Jova can make something happen? No, doesn't matter. Fisher coming out from Link. They block off Jules. Can they take him down? Almost. One more hit needed. They do take him down. They take the life zero down. It is four dead in total on the side of Mineski and Jovan, the only one to live to tell the tale. At least he got a visage for his troubles, but he just has to sit on the high ground while watching Orange just wreck his tier 2 tower. There's nothing he can do. He does have a bit of help again as Earthshaker comes back, but Earthshaker, I mean, he doesn't even get the chance to lay down a new Fisher and goes down again. Maybe he can get himself a Rubik. That bug actually might just be the case. Nope, doesn't get it. T TP out from the Weaver. Won't be able to get anything anymore. And a ult actually will kill Loveling. I think he's gonna shatter any moment. There we go. At least Age Depression gets himself a kill as well with that ultimate. Nice and all. And I mean, this is fairly early in the game. We're 17 minutes in, so the death timers on Mineski are not that high. They're not that high level. So in the end, Orange actually is the one to have to back off because everybody just comes back in and they just can't, they can't get those, uh, the, those towers, can't have time to kill off the towers because constantly they have to kill off the heroes that walk in. And even though he, they do kill them off, they're just not getting anything in return. Sharky finds himself a Weaver. There is a uh, life sitter sitting inside of that weaver though so this could be trouble for sharky sharky who if he dies wouldn't lose too much because he picked up the relic in comes the open wound sharky does not have the haunt does he have teammates around him no he does not sharky will actually get picked off there nicely done by mineski important pickup as well they really needed a kill like that again though the relic was already there so specter barely loses anything at all but a kill's a kill and most importantly it's a kill that gives a lot of experience because Spectre was level 11, and they could really use uh, use a bit of extra levels as Jovan seems to be going for a BKB for himself. Picked up the Ogre Club, which is in the, in the courier for him. In the meantime, ever since Lifesteader picked up his armlet, we've seen him rotating around a lot more to try and make things happen with his team. But he didn't really, like, he died a couple of times. That's basically all he got. And... Oh, BKB turned on, turns it around, the hunt comes in as well, the hunt actually goes a bit further, goes to the, uh, goes to judge, never mind, hunt did not go anywhere as Earthshaker gets picked up by the Rubik, still went for the Echo Slam, didn't get anything with it in return. It is gonna be Yamate that gets away alive, barely though, that's gonna be the Shadow Blade working out, oh, oh no, oh my god, it works, does it work, yep, oh my god, that was the biggest snipe ever. We saw it flying, it, oh, that was brilliant play from the Age of Depression, I mean, Josh, seriously, he was safe when he stood here, I figured, you know, he, he dodged the AA ulti, and he teleports home, only to teleport right into that AA ulti, nicely done indeed, Yamate, I don't think he'll forget that in a while, especially now that he watches the replay of it, seeing how that actually works, vacuum into the wall, or is it not, nope, no wall for them, Age Deparation tries to get away, won't be able to do that, gets picked up, a Fisher goes down. That's quite a bit of damage on Ling, but he'll live through it. And nobody can chase them because of that wall. Timbersaw was able to get himself out of safe though. Oh my god, that ulti. Snipe. Radiance Link Dagger up on the Dark Seer, so the uh, initiation power is there. Sharky gets himself away from the Weaver. Looks like Weaver and uh, Life Seer are, are hunting buddies again. I mean. They really need those kills, they need those towers, they need that gold. And they are getting it right now. They're actually making sure that Orange does not get more Radiant out of the map than they are getting before. So Radiant they've actually stagnated the gold attack. gold graph. No tier 2 towers down just yet as their Radiance is up on the Spectre right now. Open wounds, Jesse Vaj not yet ready, Shikushi away! Radiant Shikushi and Rage! That's big plays from Ling right there. Had the Rage. Pops it, steals the Shikushi, gets away. That's that's brilliant plays right there. But they still lose the tower. No denying, just the tower dead. That's the first tower that goes down the side of Orange though. Only the first. So you do have the Goldcraft with that tower slightly going in favor of Mineski. There is still hope. 12k experience, 12k gold, it is done. You can make a comeback from that. But it's very difficult to do that up against a farmed Spectre. Spectre has been involved in 15 out of the 22 kills.
Looks like uh, we're gonna see TFG building a pipe after his uh, after his blink dagger. Orange. Not grouping up to them. I mean, the Spectre can always be on the other side of the map before they find a fight. Obviously, I mean he can just haunt himself into a team fight. We're gonna see them trying to make some something happen. Perhaps Yamate wants to kill off Earthshaker straight away. Earthshaker, Reki of Souls comes out and comes a haunt. Cannot even lay down a fissure before he dies. And actually, only Enchant Totem being stolen. Oh, haunting. Gets himself an ancient separation. Maybe he can get himself something else. Vacuum back. Time lapse just in time for Joven. Gets out alive. Gets out with a lot of damage done on Sharky as well. Sharky was having trouble with that bug. Mechanism used. Darkseed, of course, helping out there. And that Radiance making sure that Joven will stop chasing. And this should be the first tier to tower down on the side of Mineski. However, the creep wave of Orange is still very far away. So they have to be patient. Apparently they've got patience, so that's that's fine. BKB for Yamate, we saw that picked up a while ago. We even saw seen it already used as well. Just checking to see if we can have some new items in the house. We already saw the four stuff on the visage. Four stuff forward. That's gonna be Earthshaker down as well as the Weaver. Brilliant play from that Dark Sphere. Blink forward. That was of course no four stuff. Just a blink. Soul Sumption will clean up. Jesse Vash who was trying to make something happen. Double kill for the stand in. The stand in, by the way. Has been having some nice plays. The Visage only died once so far, 9 to 1 to 6. And if you are standing in for a team, then, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you. And I think that he's dealing with it just fine. And he's having a good time here on this Roshan, or on this Visage. And they will take down Roshan as well. Aegis, first one of the game, 23 minutes in. Aeolt will fly out, will hit on most people, and actually will do quite some damage up on the Dark Seer. has to be careful there. But he'll, he'll live through it. He'll have a mechanism as well, and perhaps they just want to make sure that uh, they push in afterwards mid. I mean, just take out the outer towers. Logical proceedings. Perhaps even try to go Roshan with that Aegis. Maybe they want to wait for the butterfly to be ready up a Yamate. Who's, he's building towards it. He's already got the Eagle Song. Gem up for Ling, making sure that that Weaver is not going to be any issue. Weaver, by the way, we've seen him starting to build the BKB, I think about 10 minutes ago. I think I said it at that point, where, you know, he had an Ogre Club on his way from the cour for a, by Courier. He still hasn't gotten anything else since then. This is pretty troublesome for him, to be honest. As we have the gold graph going back up, I mean, it was stagnated for a little while, but now it's going towards a 20k in favor of Orange. Experience graph, same story, and Life Sooner has had enough and wants to continue farming. We'll do so on this uh, ancient stack. Pipe about done. Almost. 200 gold or so before he has it. And with that pipe, with perhaps the butterfly, with all their new items, I feel like they should be ready to uh, force out another fight. They've been fairly careful, I have to say. I mean, okay, okay they've been trying to force out some fights. They have been... Uh, able to fight. I mean, obviously, it's 27 to 7. But they haven't really overextending. Oh, that was... A I do that sometimes. Press the wrong button and teleport instead of placing a ward. Well, Ling now is no longer has a teleport. Oh, well. Sad story for him. Vacuum back in, Jules. Will we be paying for that one? In comes a haunt. That's gonna be a timber chain. No, can't make it out. Goes down. In comes Shark. He haunts himself in. Has to back himself up again. Up again as a time lapse will make sure that Joven will be back on full HP for the next fight to happen. But he won't have a time lapse anymore. At lapse anymore for another 50 seconds. Tier two tower does go down. We still don't have the pipe ready, nor the butterfly. Do they want to go in on this? Is the question. Even without those items ready. Whether they just want to take out the towers and then get the items and then go. I would say the latter. What can Mineski do in this situation? Obviously, they're behind. I mean, I don't think anybody is, is confused about that part of this game. Wait a second. A old flying in doesn't hit anything. It looks like Earthshaker at least was able to make it out alive, though. Well, there's your pipe. That's one. Butterfly, not yet done. Doesn't have the gold for it. Does the courier have something? No. Fisher. Open wounds, Fisher up on Fisher, in comes a vacuum into the Requiem of Souls, into the Darkseer wall, Jules dies, Josh dies, 
Lifestealer tries to run himself away, Armlet's toggled, but he doesn't, he's not able to rage before TPing out, his rage was on cooldown, gets picked up, double kill for Sharky, and that means that we're gonna see the tower drop, and there's only two people that live, and that's gonna be it for it, Mineski, they tap out, they give up, they don't wanna do this anymore, Echo Slam, yeah, good luck with that. That's a win for Orange, very convincing win for them as well. Who needs Winter? Winter, <clears throat> of course, the one that was uh, not present in his match for Orange, but was able to, uh, well, be there in spirit, apparently, because his stand-in, Darkwish, was doing a good job on that visage. Strong showing, and of course, Yamate Shadow Fiend never disappoints, ever, I believe. Thank you for watching, of course, you were watching the Rapture Gaming League, this was Orange vs Mineski. This game will mean <coughs> that Orange is now sitting second highest in the group stages, in the group standings, and being in the top two means that you get seated straightly into the semi-finals and not have to play in the quarterfinals. And, um, <coughs> well, Mineski, they're still in it, there's still, uh, there's still a chance for them to go through, but they, they kind of need to, uh, well, they kind of need to hope that others don't win games anymore rather than just relying on their own skill. So uh, hopefully for them that's going to happen. But of course, uh, we're going to have more games next week, but this was the last competitive game for Rapture Gaming League today. Thank you for being here. Stick around for watching some commercials to support me if you want to. Of course, my name is Shiver. You can follow me at Shiver Gaming on Twitter and on Twitch as well, as where you're watching right now. Following actually helps, by the way. Following on, following on Twitch is not only something that you do for yourself, but it's also something that you do for the channels. Even if they're already partnered and, partnered and everything, it actually helps for the amount of importance that Twitch lays on the channel. For example, if there's issues with the stream, they help people with more followers more early than people with less followers. Apparently that's the case. Anyways, um, for watching more competitive Dota, well, there is a bit of a break in terms of watching competitive Dota, but... Um, one thing that you could also wait for, and you could probably just, you know, take this time, uh, it's about two and a half hours, to make some amazing food, like, spend the next two and a half hours to make awesome food for the five hours to follow after that, because that's going to be Liquid versus Navi in a best of five for We Play Loser Bracket Finals, and that's something that I think a lot of people want to just see, including myself. I will probably play some, po uh, some pups, by the way, on this channel, so you could watch that as well. So... Yeah, you could do that, or uh, have a good afternoon otherwise regardless, and uh, we'll see you later.